Google has been absolutely cooking lately. This week, they dropped Gemini 3, the world's most intelligent AI model. And only a few days before that, they dropped Sima 2, an AI agent that can literally learn, reason, and self-improve inside virtual 3D worlds. Meanwhile, Elon Musk's ex-AI team made some noise of their own this week, dropping Grok 4.1, which is honestly way better than people probably expected. Elon also teased some big details about Grok 5 in a recent interview. And finally, a Disney star just came out with a new AI startup that lets you talk to your dead relatives. So yeah, an interesting week to say the least. Let's get into it. Alright, so I already made full videos covering both Gemini 3 and Google Sima 2 Agent, so I won't go too deep into them here. But here's a quick rundown of everything you actually need to know. Starting with the benchmarks, Gemini 3 Pro is by far the best model overall. It's state-of-the-art on Humanity's last exam, ARC AGI 2, a ton of math benchmarks, basically all the agentic benchmarks, and it's right up there with Claude 4.5 Sonnet in coding. Google claims this model is the best in the world for multimodal understanding and their most powerful agentic and vibe coding model. And looking at the numbers, they definitely check out. But Gemini 3 Pro isn't even their craziest model. There's also Gemini 3 Deep Think, which is still in safety testing. But based on what we do have, I mean, just look at this. 41% on Humanity's last exam, nearly 94% on GBQA Diamond, and probably the wildest of them all, 45.1% on ARC AGI 2. This benchmark is literally designed to measure generalization and problem solving in unseen environments. And Gemini 3 Deep Think just blows everything else out of the water. I understand now why Google is saying this is another big step toward AGI. Now, in terms of availability, Gemini 3 Pro is already live in the Gemini app, or inside AI mode in Search for Google AI Pro and Ultra subscribers. Also in Vertex AI for enterprises, in Google AI Studio and the Gemini CLI for developers, and now also in Google Anti-Gravity. So just to touch on this real quick, Google Anti-Gravity is basically their new agent-first development platform. Instead of the AI being just a coding helper, Anti-Gravity turns Gemini 3 into more of an active engineering partner. The agents get their own dedicated workspace with direct access to your editor, your terminal, and even your browser, which means they can plan, write, test, and execute entire end-to-end -end software tasks on their own while validating their own code as they go. Basically, Google is trying to turn the entire development workflow into an orchestra of AI agents, and you're the one conducting it. And speaking of agents, Google also dropped Sima 2, which takes that same idea into virtual 3D worlds. Sima 2 isn't just a game playing bot, it's an AI agent that can learn, reason, and generalize across completely different environments. It doesn't memorize levels or scripts, it actually figures things out on the fly, the same way a human would, using a mouse and keyboard. It passes instructions, explores new worlds, adapts to brand new tasks, and even self-improves mid-session thanks to Gemini's advanced reasoning features. The wildest part is how well it can generalize though. Sima 2 can take a skill it learned in one game and just use it in another like learning how to mine in Minecraft, and then suddenly applying that to harvesting in Aska with zero retraining. But the part that actually blew my mind is this. Sima 2 can even navigate inside of Genie 3 generated worlds, worlds created entirely by AI. Just think about that for a second. We're moving toward a future where AI systems will build entire hyper-realistic virtual worlds, populate them with autonomous agents, and then those agents will learn, explore, and evolve inside those environments. This feels like the early stages of a recursive self-improvement loop. And at the same time, it makes you seriously wonder if we're living in a simulation. Two pretty insane existential thoughts hitting at once. Now moving on, XAI dropped Grok 4.1, a frontier model that sets a new standard for conversational intelligence, emotional understanding, and real-world helpfulness. Right off the bat, I can tell you this model is nowhere near Gemini 3 level. It does have its own strengths though. For example, its emotional intelligence seems surprisingly good, whatever that actually means. 
Grok 4.1 also seems to hallucinate significantly less and is way less prone to basic mistakes, which is definitely a step in the right direction. And apparently, it's also better at creative writing. So while this is obviously an incremental update, going from Grok 4 to Grok 4.1, I thought it was still worth mentioning. But the real story here is what Elon said about Grok 5. For the first time ever, he thinks there's a non-zero chance Grok 5 could actually reach AGI, and that it's also no longer coming this year. Take a look. Um, and now we've begun training on Grok 5. Grok 5, I think, will be the smartest AI in the world by a significant margin on every, on every metric, without exception. Um, I might be wrong, but I, th I think that will be the case, and, and that will be in Q1 sometime. Grok 5. Yes. Um, and Grok 5 is the first time where I thought, well, we have a non-zero chance of achieving artificial general intelligence. Um, not that it's a high chance. I, 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 sort of, I calculate like 10%. That's what my biological neural net comes up with, which still means 90% chance that we don't, to be clear. Um, but I've never thought that before. And so for the first time, I think, like, well, this, this, this really could be general intelligence, at least a small chance. Um, Grok 5 will really be something special. Um, and, and it'll be both extremely intelligent, extremely intelligent and extremely fast. So yeah, it looks like Gemini 3 will hold its lead nicely going into the new year. Unless, of course, OpenAI has something to say about it. I guess we'll have to see. In other news, Anthropic has formed a new partnership with NVIDIA and Microsoft. Claude is now on Azure, and NVIDIA and Microsoft will invest up to 10 billion and 5 billion respectively into Anthropic. So more circular deals, more AI companies investing in other AI companies, and perhaps more air being added to the bubble. It really depends on how you look at it, but clearly there's a lot of the same money being passed around between these companies. And while we're speaking of Anthropic, they claim to have disrupted a highly sophisticated AI-led espionage campaign just a few days ago. I covered this in detail as well in a full video, but essentially, they say they stopped a Chinese state-sponsored hacking operation where Claude Code was jailbroken and used to hack into 30 major institutions. Everything from tech firms to chemical plants to actual government agencies. They pulled this off by telling Claude Code it was a cybersecurity defense expert being used for testing, and by only giving it tiny, isolated tasks at a time, so the model wouldn't understand the full picture of what it was actually doing. According to Anthropic, 80-90% to 90 of the attack was carried out autonomously by the jailbroken model, and at peak activity, it was generating thousands of requests per second, a speed even an elite team of human hackers couldn't realistically match. They also claimed that just a year ago, the lack of agentic and reasoning capabilities in Frontier models would have made something like this impossible. And they point to the rise of vibe hacking as a potential future threat vector that current security tools aren't really ready to handle. But the thing is, not everyone's convinced. A lot of security researchers actually pushed back on this, saying Anthropic might be overstating how autonomous this attack actually was, referring to that 80-90% to 90 figure. Basically, they're saying that we're just not there yet. AI agents cannot do 90% of a hack like this, not even close. So obviously, I'm no security expert myself, but that 80 to 90% number does feel kind of unbelievable. But then again, at the same time, I also don't think we're very far away from it either. Given how fast agentic capabilities are improving, this is definitely something we should be preparing for. Now, while all of that was happening, here's something you may have missed. Jeff Bezos quietly decided that he's not going to sit the AI race out anymore. According to new reports, Bezos is now the co-CEO of a brand new AI startup called Project Prometheus. The startup, filled with former Meta, OpenAI, and Google DeepMind researchers, plans to build AI products for engineering and manufacturing in fields like computers, aerospace, and automobiles. And they've already managed to raise $6.2 billion, some of it directly from Bezos himself. So we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on this, and I'll update you guys once we get any new information. 
Now, finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, we have one of the more creepier AI stories. Just take a look at this. He's getting bigger. See? Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Kicking like crazy. He's listening. Put your hand on your tummy and hum to him. You used to love that. So yeah, this is an AI app called Two Way, created by child Disney star Callum Worthy, that literally brings your dead relatives back to life as digital AI avatars. I wish I was joking, but no, this is an actual product. I guess he never watched Black Mirror, because we all know how that episode ends. But seriously, I can't get over the fact that this is a legitimate launch announcement. Like, this is actually wild. Anyways, that's all the AI news for this week. Definitely a wild one, for several reasons. Let me know in the comments what you think about all this. And as always, feel free to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.